Hello and welcome to part 10 of my series where I try to implement Pong in the Bevy game engine. It's been such a long time that I'm not quite familiar what I've been doing last time. One thing I remember though was that I was using some kind of system inappropriately. Let's take a look. What is it saying here? Very complex type used. Exactly, the query set. Um, I did this window resize listener work here. I, I think what I was trying to do last time was implementing score counting, but uh, just having a quick look at um, the game uh, tells me that it's not really counting any um, score here. So that doesn't seem to be working. So maybe I haven't actually done that. So let's see, what I was saying last time is that it's probably better to just use separate systems for all these um, separate queries instead of doing all in one uh, thing. So I'm probably going to do that. Um, I mean, as you can see here, uh, there's the paddle which in this case, where is it? So here I'm going over all the paddles. So probably it's best to just make a new window resize listener just for the paddle, I guess. Um, let me see. There's a paddle movement system. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Okay, so I guess I just need a... Oh, actually, I've been... I had this system all along. Update after window resize. And essentially what I'm doing is just calling that, I guess. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. So I should probably just promote this to a full system. I'm not sure if I can actually use a method on a type as a system. Well, that wouldn't work anyways, now that I think about it. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, create a separate system for that. So let's say um, um, spawn paddle, paddle movement system. Let's call it the paddle window resize or the paddle resize system. which has a resize reader, which is an event reader of window resized. It's quite weird to, to work with these low screen sizes. Usually I use 4K, but that's not very nice for uh, YouTube videos. So I'm using 1080p for, for, video, for, for YouTube, but um, yeah, it's not a lot of space, as I j I'm just noticing. Whatever. There currently seems to be a bug either in C line or in the Rust plugin that it, it has different suggestions uh, for the import and uh, they look the same, but they, they are actually different. That's kind of annoying, but it seems like it's done the right thing here. Okay, so we also need a Query um, a paddle query, I guess, and that is a query of the sprite of the paddle, the transform, the paddle, and which player we we have. That should be enough, I guess. Sorry about the small bug.
bumping noises that you might be hearing. I haven't got the microphone stand stiff enough with my new desk, so it kind of wobbles around when I'm typing. So let's import the sprite here. That was correct. Okay. And essentially I'm still torn, but probably this should not be a method on the paddle, but actually all done inside here, I guess. Let's just take this and, and move it over. So. Oh no, this was on a single paddle. That's what happened. So, okay. Let's let's leave it for, as it is for now, and then maybe adapt. Add paddles equals paddle query. Well, how how did this work? It's been a, it's been quite some time since I've done the last video. Let's take a look at how queries work again. Sh we should have done that before somewhere. In the pedal movement system, we have a query and we just call iter mute on the query, and that did actually work. So let's see. For paddle for sprite. Transform paddle and player in paddle query dot iter mute. Maybe I'm just missing some trait import or something like that. Take the paddle. What am I missing here? Let's see. Maybe I should add a cargo check target. That's because that's much faster if I just want to check for compilation um, errors. seems to work so the update oh, I need to reset that of course um, let's copy that just real quick I'll put it back in here. So let's say the paddle is mutable. So I should be able to take the paddle and call the update after window resize method on it. Although this is not happy. Oh, it's just about the number of arguments. Okay, so we take the event. Oh, okay. Um, let resize event equal if let 
some resize event in resize reader. We only care about the last one, same thing. <clears throat> if we have one, we, we give it back. Otherwise, we return. I'm currently not. I, I currently don't know of any way to do this easier, more easily. Oh, it's called reader, of course. Um, ideally, I would have something like a question mark operator, something like that. I think there's a an, a, a Rust RFC that allows something like if if let else or something like that. That might be useful for that. But right now, I mean, I could have used a match in here. Maybe, maybe let's do that. Um, match resize event resize reader iter last in case of some event pass that through yeah that's that's more readable and in the case of none we just don't do anything we just return that's better Let's put in the resize event. The next thing is the player. I guess we can also just get uh, the correct player like this player. What this does is it, it's a pattern that matches a reference of something. And by doing this match, the player is not a reference anymore. This, of course, only works with uh, types that implement the copy trait. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be able to do that um, to get a copy, essentially, of the, of the value. But now we have an, an owned player. The transform, we don't care about the transform. All we care about is the, the size. Is it like that? Oh no, the, it's the translation. So uh, sprite dot size and transform the translation. I mean the IVE support could be much better in this case. It's quite horrible at the moment. Not sure what's happening there. Resize event. It's also complaining here, which doesn't make any sense at all. Of course, it's not sprit, it's sprite. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay. This one's a mutable borrow of the size and the translation because, of course, it's modifying them. And I can only do that if these are declared mutable. Otherwise, I won't be able to actually mutably borrow them at all. Then again, maybe it's it's actually better to to just use that code and put in put it in there, just like that. Hello, that speed, the window height. It's part of the resize event.
constants can stay where they are and we don't need this anymore. This also means we don't need the queries uh, needed in the query set anymore. So this is now zero, one, and two. Just like that. Cannot find value size in scope. This is the sprite size. And this is the transform translation. Let's see what the compiler is telling us in the next iteration. And use import parallel, of course. Expected struct x, y, found struct by we preload back to. is a vec2 doesn't make uh, any sense right now Yeah, of course, this cannot be dereferenced. Let's let's take a look at what I was just doing. I was using the asterisk on a vec2, which let's take at the deref. It's not deref, um, is it? Oh, of course, uh, I used the the asterisk operator on vec2. In this case. Um, sprite.size which then transformed in, into an xy which is this a math xy that's why it was um, telling me that it's incorrect same thing probably here and of course that doesn't make any sense thank you compiler and this constant is never used. How? I, I see that it's used here, so what's your problem? Oh, because the paddle resize system is never used, of course. So in this case, let's just add it. Like, just like that. And now it should be used. I hope. Not sure what it's complaining about here. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. Let's run it. And it should still resize the pedals, which it does. Um, so let's make a commit for that. Pull out paddle resizing into separate system. And that's it. Next is the wall. The wall. There should be a wall resource resize system. And 
this has a resize reader, which is an event reader of window resized, and a query of a sprite, a transform, and a wall. can use the same code here again with the early return pattern. Can you actually do something like that? Does that make sense? No. Would be interesting. So for every sprite transform and wall. I think wall should also be copy. So we can do this. Oh, it's not. We can change that. Like this. How did we do it with the paddle? Interesting. Did it deduce the copy trait? Let's see. Look up the copy trait. Okay, then I do not act, do not understand the this pattern, the question mark pattern, uh, not question mark ampersand pattern as well as I thought I did. Seems like it doesn't require the type to be copy, after all. So, or maybe enums are just copy by default doesn't make any sense does it the paddle is also not well whatever for for sprite transform and wall in query dot iter mute now let's take the same code from above cast doesn't make any sense you know what I'm going to do this um, window resized fill it up not like that add missing fields ignore the ID and assign it the resize event like this Shouldn't, shouldn't that work? We'll see.
Use of moved value. Yeah, let's not let's not go down that route for now. Maybe it's not owned the the reset event. Resize event. So this is sprite dot size this is transform dot translation this is not self anymore but it's the wall that doesn't make any sense So this doesn't really make any difference if it's a reference or not. Because this match doesn't care about, about that. <coughs> Maybe drinking like while taking a video it's not the best idea sometimes <clears throat> okay that should work as intended let's remove that let's remove this right here then remove this query and shift this over again Compile it, hope it actually compiles. Oh, of course, we need to still register the system. Um, oh, there's no wall system yet. <laughs> now you see it's not resizing it properly because it's not registered. <clears throat> Add system wall resize system system that and use import wall of course why isn't it running it's running okay <clears throat> this is now working let's commit that pull out wall resizing into separate system Okay, next the, what, what is that, the goal? Goal resize system. event reader of window resized and a query of what do we have again a sprite a transform a go and a player, so we know which one is meant. Like, just like that. Then the same, uh, same old early return pattern to get access to the resize event. Uh, 
and then the fort loop, of course. <clears throat> For every sprite, transform goal and player in. Of course, this still needs a name. In the query that it can mutably now I can copy paste this code. Like that. Sprite size and transform translation. Self is goal just like that. <clears throat> oh, and of course, I need still need to remove that and register the system. Now I'm not sure if this even is even a query set anymore. We'll see. <clears throat> so the ball is just the, the latest one. Goal resize, not that. Resize system. And the goal import is probably not used anymore. Why wasn't the goal used? Well, whatever. We still need the goal component, so we actually get the goal out, goals out here. Oh yeah, this this is not used because it's just a marker. That's why. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I have to say since the last update, this IDE is sometimes behaving really weird. Still compiling. And seems to work. So next commit. some point we probably also need to split up the system registration so we don't have to register every single system in the main method but for now it's okay um, now let's make the ball repositioning system Maybe, it, is it resizing the ball? Oh, actually it is. <coughs> what did I call the other systems? Resize, not resizing.
we still have a, a resize reader, which is an event reader of window resized and a query called query that takes that queries a sprite a transform and a ball same old early return if somebody knows about the way to make this pattern easier then just write it in the comments okay for every for every ball sprite and tra transform and ball in query dot mute for every single one of these run this code just like that self is the ball Right, and transform. Where's the ball width coming from? It's from here. This is really strange. It thinks, it thinks that this will move the ball width, but f32 is a copy type so that doesn't move move anything so no idea what they what what they mean by that okay let's completely remove the window resize listener here which is now obsolete and replace the window resize listener system with the ball resize system and the ball is not directly referenced anymore in here. Also, these two are not referenced anymore. And this should now, oh, it still has warnings about this. System. Just like that. Now let's go back to our score. How did this work? Spawn scoreboard. We have a score. Where is the score used? We inserted the score as a resource. And now we have a goal collision system. And this doesn't seem to work properly, I guess. So let's see. We have a ball query, a transform, a goal query. So for every ball, hmm. 
Do we really need to do this check every frame? Yeah, of course we need to do that. But let's see. Let's lock the collision. Doesn't seem to implement the display trait, but hopefully it implements... Doesn't? Collision doesn't implement debug. Let's um, close all this stuff here. It says here that it implements debug. Oh no, it now it works. Great. I'm really not sure why th why this is compiling so long whatever collision okay so since this is a collision why then doesn't it count the score properly So let's say I'm counting, I'm printing the score after every collision. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the score is counting properly. It's not counting properly, it's counting too many times. But that's probably just because I'm not resetting. Um, once I'm resetting immediately, that shouldn't be a problem. I, I kind of get a deja vu. Probably I already got to this point last time and um, noted that I needed to somehow trigger an event. <clears throat> so let's see, how can I make my own event? Also there's um, migration guides and I could have used them but I was kind of blind to them and this means that I wasn't able to actually do that. Wait, what is a local event reader? Oh, okay. Has been removed, great. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Now let's go to the correct tag. Then the examples. Event. Creation, activation and reception. 
that sounds good. Add event my event. Event trigger state. Struct event trigger state is a timer. Event trigger system. Okay, I don't think we need the state. This is probably just so the event can be triggered. So there is an event writer and we just write our event to the event writer, that's it. And I don't even have to implement any trait for the event itself. So let's see. What should my event contain? Probably just scored or something like that. Scored. Not sure where to put the event, event though. Uh, oh, maybe it's a good idea to put it in the score. Should I call it event store scored? No, score, st st stored. Should I call it an event? No, whatever. Event that is triggered when a player scored a goal or something like that. I'm not. I'm not an, uh, a native speaker, so no idea if that sentence makes sense uh, grammatically. But whatever. Spawn scoreboard. This is what we need to change. So in main, we need to add event. Add event scored. Also, yeah, it's, is it public? Yeah, it, yes, it is. Like that. Was it like that? Yes. Our good old turbo fish syntax, which is great because it's not ambiguous. So next we need an event writer in our go um, goal collision system. Maybe immutable, not sure. Event writer of squirt. Like this. And now, once this collision happens, <coughs> and after we've updated the score, we just to trigger the event. Um, Send, yeah, send, scored. Now we have sent the, the event. Okay, that should work. Now we just need a scoreboard update system. Like that. It has an a scored reader event reader of the scored event. It has it has what else does it have?
the resource. Score resource of score. And it also needs um, the scoreboard. So query the scoreboard has a scoreboard component and all we care about is the, the text component. And this needs to be a tuple text and scoreboard. Scoreboard is just a marker. So in this case, Um, same early return pattern again, like this, scored event, scored reader, like this, we only care about the last one as always, not as always, but in this case, and Hmm, I'm kind of tempted to implement this. Yeah, maybe just use the display trait here. It's kind of lazy, but I'm going to do, the, do it anyways. So this is score default dot to string like this. And in this case, for, career, for text and score board in query that it mute text dot should this be text.sections zero dot value equals score dot two string that might actually work if we had made this mutable like that Not sure what it is complaining about here. Missing in in for loop. Definitely not missing. This is kind of awkward. Text.sections. Why is it not completing anything? Let's see. Should be something like get. Maybe it's in the index trade. Oh, it's there, it's over here.
methods from dvrf target t. Okay, so it's from the um, underlying slice. Get with an index gives you an option, <coughs> just as expected. And is there a get mute? Yes. Get mute. this dot map section section not value equals score dot two string that should work Maybe not map, um, but just the proper thing to do for each. Doesn't really matter, but. Unsatisfied trade bounds iterator. How does an option not implement iterator? Wait. Option. Oh, it implements into iterator. Okay, that makes sense. So let's use map for now. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Or maybe instead of doing that, let's let's do it more simply. If let some section. In uh, equals text dot sections dot get immutably zero. Then we do this. Maybe that's better. Yeah, looks much better. So now we have a scoreboard update system that we still need to add here. Don't really care about that. There's no value behind it. Let's see. Okay. It updates the store or scoreboard already. What it doesn't do right now. Let's see. Oh. Oops. That doesn't look too great. But anyways, let's see if it works on both sides.
Okay. So this means it takes seven frames for the uh, ball to get through the wall. <laughs> I'm not sure why this text doesn't work properly. Maybe I maybe just the size is incorrect. But let's not worry about that right now. Take a look at the event. Not like this. Nothing else. So in any case, we need to do a reset when a score happens. Which is what these resize systems are doing. Maybe we shouldn't call them resize systems, but reset systems. I'm just now wondering Is there another way to get the window size except the event? There might be a window resource. Not that. Window create window, window plugin. Let's take a look at the examples. Clear color, multiple windows, scale factor override, window settings. Let's see. Window descriptor. Okay, there's a Windows resource with a primary, so that might be used. That's interesting. I think we can use that. We just re rename all the resize systems to reset systems. We take a window resource and we add a window listener system that creates reset events. So the same reset events, reset events, reset event happens both in the in case we're scoring, and in case um, the window is resized. Maybe let's not call. Maybe it shouldn't be called reset. Maybe something like new round, no. For now we can call it reset, doesn't, doesn't really matter. But first let's commit what we have right now.
create and listen to scored event. So now the scored event will be resa uh, renamed to reset. Um, where's my scored? Over here. Let's go over to main. So now we are listening to reset. Like this. And this the goal exist anymore then we have a window resize window uh, resize event listener out here in main Set on window resize system. Let's call it that. It has a resize reader with resize reader, which is an event reader of the resize. Window resized. Don't really care about the event itself. Just that if if we get an uh, an event like that, if let some res some underscore equals no. If resize reader dot iter dot last dot is sum then this means we also need a writer reset writer reset writer dot send reset this and now all of these are looking for other kinds of events so we have a window with a resource of the window like this And this is a reset reader that gets reset events. If reset reader dot iter dot last 
dot is none and we can early return let's do the same over here if it is none we early return and then our actual code happens like this and the window window dot right maybe yeah which means this doesn't really make any sense anymore window not height it is already f32 See if that already compiles. Sport doesn't exist anymore, which also means that this has to re be replaced by a reset. So for now, I just want to know that the paddle resizes correctly. This doesn't exist anymore. Let's run it and of course it crashes immediately window does not exist as a resource maybe we need to insert the window descriptor resource first insert resource window descriptor let's see Actually, we're doing that already over here so that's not the point so maybe this is wrong oh I know what I've been doing wrong This is called Windows plural, which is, oops, which is quite different from window singular. Wrong number of arguments? How so? Maybe the wrong window. Um, Windows import. So which one is it? Not that one. Whatever. Okay, so we have some windows. Do 
we want to unwrap here. Yeah, should be okay. Let's see. That should now work properly, I hope. That looks much better. But it seems the event is not true. The reset event is not triggered properly. Why is that? Okay, so obviously the goal does trigger the reset. What does not trigger the reset is the window resize. Why does the goal trigger the reset but the window resize does not? What does the goal do? Reset writer dot send reset. I don't see any difference. Where is the difference? What seems to be the problem? Let's read up on the event. explanation whatsoever reads events what I'm not sure about right now is can they steal events from each other the different systems can they steal events I mean, probably not, I guess, but who knows? Do some printf debugging. system
This is taking really, really long. No, they're always both re receiving the the event. So why? Case of window resource. What what happens there? Nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. What? What am I doing wrong? Print line triggering reset never happening. Oh, it's the same old problem. I'm not actually using the system anywhere, am I? Never registered. <sighs> Always the, the bug is sitting in front of the monitor. Reset on window reset system. Set on window, resize system, the system like that, and now it should work properly, I hope. And it seems to work. Works great. Just like that. And maybe if we now implement, no idea what the problem is here, but we'll see. Uh, maybe we can now actually fix the score counting like that. So the pedal resize system, let's rename it. Pedal reset system. The window is just from Bevy, the goal, goal collision system, goal reset system, still needs an event reader of windows. No, wrong. Windows, not mutable, is a resource of windows. And we need the correct windows since this doesn't work properly, the import doesn't work properly, we're going to use bevy prelude windows like that. I'd really like to get that fixed, but I don't have the nerves to currently debug my IDE for why that doesn't work properly. Um, we don't care about resize events, we care about reset events. Not like that, that wouldn't make any sense. Reset. If reset reader dot iter dot last is none return that window equal windows dot get primary dot unwrap window dot width window dot height not like that okay 
that's the goal reset system. Then we have the ball reset system. We need event reader of reset events. Not like this, like this. Um, reset reader. Windows is a resource of Windows, and since the import doesn't work properly, let's do it by man. Uh, do it manually again. Use bevy prelude Windows like this. This is not needed anymore. If reset reader dot iter dot last dot is none if there's no reset we just return and don't care window is our windows dot get primary dot unwrap still not still unsure about the unwrap here but um, I guess we can assume that there actually is a primary window I hope so dot height and this still doesn't get that an f32 is actually copy no idea what's going on here That was the goal, the ball, now the wall, stop it, wall reset system, windows and again I mean it wouldn't hurt to not call it res but actually call it resource res could be anything resin re um, resolve Result, in this case, resource. I don't really like these short names, but sadly, even the Rust standard library is full of them. And actually, the language itself, you can see pub, fn, whatever, Im impl. It's not like an IDE couldn't uh, autocomplete these if they were longer, like, like for example, function. Okay, if reset reader dot iter dot last, if there is no reset, we don't care. And the window is the primary window unwrapped. seems to be the problem. Whatever. Oh, with I'm just blind. Okay. So maybe that was it. Window resize should only be used over here. Oh, 
Maybe that's it. And that should also fix our bug, hopefully. That the score is counted multiple times. Although there might be a race condition, I'm not quite sure. I'm not entirely sure if the event is is fully... The event handlers are fully run before... Um... Oh, it works. Nice. So we almost have a playable game at this point. There's still the bug with the score getting too large and not being displayed properly. And also, there's this bug of the paddles going outside of the allowed areas. We need to fix that as well. And once these are fixed, we actually have a playable Pong game, I guess. There's a lot of polish that can still be applied, but we're nearing our goal. Let's, let's say that. Also, resize still works. That's great. Although it's, it's kind of a bit jittery. <laughs> Let's find the remaining print line calls. Just like that. Maybe a cargo clippy for good measure. Did you mean clippy? Yes, I did mean clippy. how I run it. Mm, not why why is it trying to run gradle? That doesn't make any sense at all. Whatever. Just don't think about it. Everything is all right. So let's commit that for now. Send reset event when scored and reset every. Collision and window resize and listen to it for positioning. It's not a good commit message. Don't don't take this as a template, but uh, whatever. I. I I don't think of myself as a good example in, in every case, or in most cases. Um, one thing I could also do is do a cargo update. Okay. Maybe cargo outdated for good measure. Not that it will find anything because the only thing I have in my cargo.com is bevy. Run it. Finding actually does take a while. Or 
rather the compilation. Okay, great. FBS. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Um, it's the first time we actually have something that is remotely playable, so I'm quite happy about that. And maybe see you next time, whenever that will be. <laughs> Bye.